Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's and I've come here to look at a Land Rover Discovery Sport. So, what's the problem? DPF filter is full. So, I'm just going to concentrate this video on how you can fix this issue uh, without replacing your DPF DPF filter there full. So, of course, if you bring this to Land Rover now, um, it's going to be told that you need a new uh, DPF, which um, is normally told here. And again, it's been told here in this situation. So we're gonna see how we can avoid that situation. So here's what happened. Bring it to a mechanic. Uh, he tried to do a, sorry, a particle filter regeneration. Yep. And then it's gonna read the soot mass, press okay. Then it'll tell you to switch it off. So we're gonna switch it off. The soot mass is above the upper limit and a, a particle filter regeneration cannot continue so you must replace the particle filter so a lot of garages not saying that they're doing anything wrong they're just obviously doing things by the book and saying yeah look the particle filter needs to be replaced now a Land Rover dealership will 100% tell you that and they're not doing anything wrong by telling you that that's just how it's supposed to do. But um, what we can do here is go to diesel particle filter replacement. Now we clean the DPF before we do this because you don't want to tell her that it's just had a DPF replacement and your DPF is still blocked. You do want to clean it before you do this. But I'll just show you how you can do it. So I switched the ignition back to number two. Oh, I've had my foot on the brake there so it started up. So just switch the ignition onto number two, press OK. Now this is a launch Euro Tab 2, so it'll be the same on any other launch tablet. Um, now top down use launch software, so if you're using a top down, it'll be exactly the same as well. So we're gonna reset the DPF teller that's had a new one. Yes, ignition is on number two. Now it's gonna clear the trouble codes, which is P2463. Sort accumulation. Now that's almost finished. I'll tell you a little fun f fact about this car. Um, it's already had a DPF before. A bit ridiculous really because it hasn't even really done a lot of mileage. Uh, 80,000. The first one's in warranty. Now the car is not in warranty. It needs, an, needs a new DPF again, I've been told. Uh, and it was all down to just letting the AdBlue go too low. Uh, it then triggered off a Knox fault. Um, one trick on these, you just fill the AdBlue level right back to the top and those codes for Knox exceedance, they just disappear. Like it's done on this one. It's only got the P2463 and I now haven't done any repair to the AdBlue system. All I've done is filled up the AdBlue. So we're going to turn the ignition off now. Sorry, trying to get a screen where it's not uh, going blurry. Now we're going to switch the ignition back to number two. Press OK and that's done. Switch it off. Now if we start the vehicle up, the default should be gone. But of course, within maybe 20 miles or so, that will come back. Unless, of course, you have cleaned the DPF, then it will stay off. So that's the code there that it had. Let's go back in and see if that code has cleared or not. Yep, it's cleared. So if we read the data stream, we haven't cleaned the DPF just yet. We're going to do it in a minute. So we'll go to the DPF data here, and I'll just, while we're here, I'll show you a few a few other things. If you're here and you may not have seen some other videos, we're going to look for differential pressure sensor. And press tick. So we've got 20 millibars on the DPF pressure. We'll hold it up to 3000 RPM. Round about. Very difficult to get it to stay steady. 170, so it's, you know, it's blocked, but it's not, it's not the worst I've ever seen. Now we've just run our cleaning fluid in there and uh, we should see the fluid dropping down. 3000 RPM, 50 now HPA.
and there's just drop down to zero at idle there. So you can see how easy it is to get that clean. Uh, it didn't take us very long at all. And you can see there just how ridiculous it is that they, they say like it was what 20 millibars on idle and 170 I think uh, at 3000 RPM and apparently that DPF is beyond repair. But you can see there now zero readings, zero HPA. If I give it a little bit of an acceleration up it should increase, there you go. Sorry the screen's uh, trying to focus there automatically, just holding the revs up slightly. And uh, you can see there that it is working perfectly and down to zero so it's as good as a brand new DPF now. Uh, so you can see there it definitely doesn't need replacing. And I hope that can also, also answer the question for a lot of people who say that you can't clean a DPF while it's on the car. Uh, it has to be taken off and put on a special machine. 